Queensland's beautiful coast is lined with stunning beaches. But the highway that takes you there is Australia's deadliest. And when things go wrong... How the hell am I going to get that out? One of the country's largest towing companies is there to pick up the pieces. Clayton's towing, loose beating. Big accidents. We have helicopters starting to land already. Bigger machines. Push it over, guys. And the toughest yeah. towies in the trade. <sighs> this three-generation family business handles it all. So strap in for a wild ride. I'm putting my seatbelt on. It's good. <laughs> At Clayton's HQ, Boss Mike has called in a team of crack recovery experts. OK, guys, they've got some photos that we need mailed through, freshly printed off here. This is what you're up against. OK, we've got a dozer here. It's 30 tonne. You're looking 170 metres down in this gorge. So on this job here, Ross is in charge. Everyone's got to listen to Ross. Jim? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. <laughs> OK, what Ross says goes. He makes a final call. I'm Ross Hopper and I'm a recovery and salvage specialist. Been doing this for 21 years. Jobs I love the most. Anything difficult, I'm right in. I'll put my hand up every time. And they don't come much tougher than this job. Sounds like we've got a decent job ahead of us here. 30 ton machine upside down in the gorge is going to uh, definitely uh, have a work cut out for us today. Veteran towie Jimbo also thrives on big challenges. Yeah, uh, this is mega towing at its best. Um, it's a pretty big pull, this one. This mega tow will be doing most of the winching to recover the dozer out of the scrub. Ross has been the response trailer out with our extra equipment. We also got a float with an excavator on it with another large winch. My name's Jimbo. I've been with Clayton's for 36 years. You're probably known as a cranky old bastard. So I'm too old for this shit. Gets his own way and gets the job done. How far from here, Rod? Yeah, we're uh, not far, only a couple of k's away now. This crash site is on a property far from the nearest town, so the team will be staying on site till the job's done. We're gonna have to walk down. And then down in the gorge, it's, it's a bit steep. Steep, all right. Bloody, unbelievably steep. The dozer left a trail of destruction as it slid down this hill and into the gorge. This could be a bit tricky, Ross. Looks like a bit of a catastrophe's happened here. I'm glad I wasn't in the bastard. That's pretty nasty. Wow, well, that's going to be challenging. Definitely a challenge on those rocks there. That's really serious. Incredibly, the driver escaped uninjured. Bloody hell. This is going to be fun. This is going to be one hell of a job. An urgent call-out from the local police has Clayton's young gun, Sam, preparing for a cold swim on a dark night. We've just had calls from the police uh, about um, they've, they believe a vehicle's um, gone into the, to the water there out at here at Bly Bly. Um, so we've just, I'm just heading down with Dad now to check it out. Packed my tights and my life jacket, so you'll see it's, it's bloody winter and cold, so it'll <laughs> be a nice night for a swim. This job will be a family affair. Sam's dad and boss, Mike, is driving the recovery truck. It's, it would be fun to, to just do something with dad. It's like a little family outing. <laughs> but this will be no picnic. The police need to find out if there's anyone in the vehicle. And it's um, submerged. They're not sure if anyone's in it or not. Just basically we're told to get there as a priority. I guess these types of jobs are always hard. Like, you, you don't know what you're going to go out to, and I guess you've just got to be prepared for anything in this job. I'm Samantha. I do a bit of everything around here. I look after the accounts, and then on my spare time off, I'll get to go do a few recoveries and stuff with the boys. 
since I was a, a little, little girl, all I've ever wanted to do is grow up one day to look after the family business and be a huge part of it. Mike and Sam find the police waiting for them on the banks of a muddy river on a pitch black night with zero visibility. I brought my daughter, she can have a swim. Yeah, bring her water wings. So where is it anyway? See where that little reflection bit is? Yeah. Out there. About so there. Is that how far out it was? Yeah. Uh, but it's since moved obviously from about here. I guess we'll just go for a look and, and see what we can find. If there's nothing there, then you know we'll have to call it a night. But um, yeah, just it's all dark, can't see anything. So. Sam will be connected to the shore by a floating plasma rope. What we're going to try and do now is walk down the mangrove swamp. It's deep mud. Try and get down there and just see if we see anything out there at all. A job like this is, is not going to be easy. It's totally black out there. It's a challenge. It's not an easy task out here. It's dark. Can't see anything. I really got to watch out for Samantha. Is with. There's a lot of bull sharks in this area. I haven't got to run out of rope. I can't reach yeah, it. I'm on it. You're on it? Yeah. Okay, can you get down the um, side, Samantha? Yeah. Are the windows open or shut? Open. Open? Open. Okay, how many windows? Can you both windows, front and back? No, just the front. The worst part of these jobs in the water. You hope there's nobody in it still. Unfortunately, you never know. And she's filming around underneath the water there inside the car. So, um, yeah, that's part of the job that's not so good to be a towy. Just make sure you don't feel any bodies in there, hopefully. OK, let's see if we can get back up this mongrel of a hill. Glad it's not the middle of summer. This is going to be one hell of a job. The dozer was being driven by Brendan, whose dad, John, owns this property. How you going, John? I'm good. How's yeah, things, Brendan? Yeah, good, good to job. see you. We're looking healthy. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. probably lucky oh, the tip of the right blade dug in and it had nothing underneath it. So it allowed me to spin around, take away the momentum instead of just plowing straight into the bank. That's one hell of a ride, eh? You're lucky. Excavator driver Adam's clearing a track to the dozer. It'll need hours of preparation before it can be moved. What's going on, guys? What are we up to? I'm trying to pull this final drive out. Ross's offsider is someone he knows he can depend on, his wife, Sally. At this time in the job, you're arguing. Didn't take you long to start. Got to pull this cover off so we can uh, get the planetary out. Recovery experts have to be pretty good mechanics too. Jimbo's disconnecting the hydraulics to the dozer blade, which broke off in the crash. Oh, that's all I need for starters. While Ross is removing a drive shaft. Because the engine's off, the tracks won't turn. So if I pull this out, the tracks will turn, and uh, and we just pull the 30 tonnes straight up the hill. By now, it's getting late, but Ross is keen to move the six-ton dozer blade out of the way before dark. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, pulley block is laying nicely. Go for it, Jim. Pull away. Come on, baby. Beautiful. Keep going. Keep going. They're going to spin. Oh, that's all right. So far, so good. But moving the dozer itself will have to wait till tomorrow. Do you want to disconnect everything and drive your truck to the top tonight, Jim? Yes, please, mate. We can drop them off and start again in the daylight. So I pack up. Lucky they came prepared. The major incident response unit is fully equipped for overnight stays. So we've got the kitchen, sink, got a fridge, TV. And these are our three beds so that the workers are rested and recouped in the morning. Makes go to work pretty easy when you when you can knock off at night, have a shower, hook into the fire and, and have a feed, have a, have a bit of breakfast, hook into it again. Just make sure you don't feel any bodies in there, hopefully. After responding to a police call, Boss Mike's daughter, Sam, has located a sunken car in this cold, shark-infested river. 
Okay, so if you come back across, I'll get a winch rope, Samantha. And we'll hook it on, eh? Sam's still not sure if there's anyone in the car. I've swum out there. We've seen a couple of bubbles, and um, about 50 metres out, I've, I've hit the car. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a scary ex experience, I guess, putting your hand down into a car that you just you, you don't know what's in there, or the story, or, or what's what's going to be in there. So, um, yeah, night time, Murky Creek. Um, <laughs> yeah, just another night at Clayton's, I guess. <laughs> so we're just going to um, run a line out from this one now. It's about 100 metres. So. Dad's just going to grab the winch cable out here now for me and I'll swing it back out and, um, and we'll, we'll hook up and, and see if we can pull it into to shore. All right, I've got to try and find it now. The bubbles are gone. Where was it? Straight out here, wasn't it? Where was that wheel and feet marks? About here? Yeah, so I'll swim out from here. The plan is for Sam to connect the winch cable to a seat belt in the sunken car. Okay, gone. Wait. Samantha's just trying to put the seat belt. There's no way in the world she's going to dive underneath and find it. Try and get underneath the car. So the seat belt's still a pretty good hook, do. Seat belt still hold a couple tonne. The top of the roof's about half a metre under, so it's in. Probably about three metres of water here. You got it? Yeah, I'm only just on one. That'll do. Just Yeah, come in, hon. The police are standing by waiting to find out if anyone was trapped in the car. I think there's a body in there. You think there's a body in there? Yeah. OK. Well, we'll find out when we get it out. What, did you feel something there, did you? Yeah. OK, well, we'll find out when we get it out. The police want the car out as quickly as possible so they can find out what's inside. We've just got to wait and see what's in there. Samantha had a bit of feel and she felt something in the um, patch of the seat, which went hand in there. So we're hoping it's just an object and um, not something else that we don't want to find. We're going to find out very soon. Tricky's bed is the only place we get hooked onto is the seat belt. We're going to hope that hangs on. We think it will. When I came out here to the police officers and said I'd hooked to a seatbelt, they're like, well, that's going to do nothing. But um, it does. It, it honestly, most of the time, will pull a car fully loaded with water. Yeah, I can see the car. That's still, on, still on his wheels. Should be able to roll it over. In theory, should roll back on his wheels in a second. This is the moment of truth. They're about to find out if someone was trapped in the car when it sank. I'm going to try and get a hook on the back of it. Don't go in tow balls around the tow bar. Yeah, have you got the... Pretty good. I'm going to bring this down a bit more closer, the aft of the car. Nothing in there, no one in it. The car appears to be unoccupied, but there's still one more place to look. But we haven't checked the boot yet. Mike knows from experience that you can never be sure what you'll find in a recovered vehicle. What are we going to find in the boot? Don't like this part. Thankfully, the boot is empty too. Mike gives the police the all clear. Hook it all up now. Yeah. I might get changed. You're freezing. Oh, it's pretty cold. It's pretty cold. They said I should get a Christmas bonus. They should get a Christmas bonus. <laughs> they said I should get a couple of new cars and a Christmas bonus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that did well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are oh, you good? The car will be taken back to the Clayton's holding yard for forensic investigation. When I was feeling around in the car for the seatbelt, I, I sort of felt something a bit squishy and, and sort of, you know, your, your heart sort of sinks. And, and when you see the car come out with no, no, you know, one in there, it's always a relief that someone hasn't lost their lives and this isn't, you know, a tragic event. After a cold night camped out in the bush, Ross and his team are preparing to recover a dozer stuck at the bottom of a steep gorge. Off again, ready to do the big job today, so hopefully it all goes well. Excavators down there, got Megaton and Jimbo heading down. So yeah, 
all happening. Down in the gorge, Jimbo and Ross are preparing for the big toe. I'm going to get this sucker over here. To overturn a 30-ton dozer, you need your biggest chains. And all the pulling power of the mega toe, plus the winch on the excavator. Got everything set up now. We're, I'm very happy with how they're going. Yeah, we've got five winches on it. And, uh, yeah, right on, we'll see how we go. There's a lot of work involved, and you've got to do it right. You really only get one good chance at it. And it's also very dangerous. Uh, everybody's got to be in the right place at the right time and keep an eye on everything. That's how it is. Now the team's about to find out how well they've chosen their towing points. Excavator only first. Uh, take up the weight. Right -o. left hand main off, right hand auxiliary on. There you go. Beautiful. Stop. Stop. Uh, right -o. all go for it. But I keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Slow down on the left hand main. Right hand main, left hand main, excavator in. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop everyone. We've just got to turn them around now. No. Start yeah, the winching process up, up the hill. Right -o, right, right main in. Keep going. Right -o, keep going. Right -o, left hand main out, excavator and right hand main in. Right -o, hold there, stop, stop. Right but now Ross has stop. spotted a problem. Yeah. One of the dozer tracks is jammed. This uh, dozer skidding, it won't rotate. Suddenly, this job just got even tougher. Even with the jammed track, the powerful winches on the megatow and excavator get the dozer moving again. Yeah, well, there you go. We're winching it up with one track locked up. Yeah, it's coming up OK. I think we can use all the winches now, Ross. From here on up, it's just a hard slog. We'll go as far as we can, I think, Ross, and then I'll have to go for a drive if I can take off while he holds it. Each time they reel in the winches, they move the megatow 50 metres uphill and repeat the process. Yeah, no, we've run it forward and we'll do another uh, 250 metre pulls and we'll have it at the top. Just hold it from there on. At least we got the dozer out without doing any more damage to it. And that's great news for the dozer's driver, Brendan. More of a repair job instead of just the ride on. A few bits and pieces bent, but uh, should be able to fix him up. Good on you, precious. Thank you. Okay. For this team of hardcore recovery experts, there's nothing quite like the satisfaction of a tough job well done. All that's left now is the long drive home. When the Clayton's crew is not on the road, they like to get together and let off some steam. For all of us at you know, Clayton's, we are a big family, but our family extends. It's just not the Clayton's family. Everyone who works here is part of our family. They've got it loaded up on the truck. And what do the towies do on a day off? A towing challenge, of course. It's a race to see who's the quickest and safest at loading and unloading a tilt tray. So essentially, the guys just need to load the vehicle per our procedures, so safety straps and, and loading it correctly with the correct restraint equipment, unloading it as well. Boss Mike steps up to show them how it's done. I think he's done this before. That's OK. Pretty good effort. Yeah. Mike sets the time to beat. He must be getting paid by the hour. All right, Spoonie's up next, guys. But there's some stiff competition. He's 
really kicking some goals here, Spoonie. Right, oh, look at that. There's smoke coming off the tyres. Unreal. Mike Clayton, you're in trouble here, mate. <laughs> we have a new world record. Spoonie's time is a cracker, but now it's the old pro Jimbo's turn. You have to use the winch. I'm just making you aware of that. I'm doing different procedures. Whatever. He likes to do things his way. This is an old school technique. I think Jimbo will cheat. Oh, I know what he's going to do. This is going to be good. Oh, nice touch. All right, stand back, guys. Now this is breaking all the rules. That's my bloody car. <laughs> With the penalties, he's still in for a good chance, I think, of taking this competition out. <laughs> yeah, I might the old school method. Uh, it went pretty well, actually. That was as wrong as you could possibly get. And now, the moment they've all been waiting for. First place, it's going to go to Spoonie. Yeah. Perfect job. You're the man. That's You're done. Man. You can find a normal office job somewhere, but when you are a part of something that is like a family-owned business, you really feel a part of that family, and it's just a pleasure to come to work.